Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Richard Win Kesan Sak from Bangkok, Thailand. Today, I would like to just to present um, a common case about central canal stenosis. It is become, becoming very common these days because we are um, changing into approaching into aging society globally now. It requires more endoscopic handling skill than the simple discectomy, as you know from yesterday. But it is still very standardized procedures. Steps are always the same in every case. So first, we perform the interlaminar bone resection. From the ipsilateral side first, it is always the same. We start from the tip of the descending facet, we go up to the upper lamina, then we go down to the ascending facet, down to the lower lamina, then we decompress the ipsilateral side first, and then we go to the other side by over-the-top technique by cutting the upper lamina and go to the cut some of the base of the spinous process to go into the, the other side. And most of the time, we just cut the flavum so we can decompress all the fecal sac. So this case is um, about 70 years old woman. She presents with claudications yeah, on bilateral side. So I ap approach from the left side, and this is left L3-4. So the thing that you're seeing here, So this is the, um, we always start from the tip of the descending facet. The key point here is to clean and to prepare all the soft tissue, the ligaments, um, the muscle, and you see the clear bone, the bare bone before you start the drilling. So you avoid having a lot of debris so you can continue your bone drilling without any problems. Yeah. So you won't have much bone dust and the debris here. I always zoom in my scope to see the tip of the drill all the time and always stop the bleeding when, when it, whenever possible so you can have clear pictures of the other structures. Now I am drilling on oh, sorry, the lower lamina. This is the descending facet. This is the oval shaped drill, so it's going to cut only at the side. So you have to, pre to place the drill beside the bone that you want to cut. It doesn't cut at the tip. So the technique is to press the drill down deep enough to cut at the side. Yeah. This is a lower lamina. And see, always see the tip so you, you know what you are cutting, so you, you won't injure the neural structure. And use the curryson. This is the insertion of the flavum caudally. Now you see the fat at the lateral recess of the ipsilateral side. The key is to turn the scope because always the working channel is eccentric. So when you turn the scope, when you rotate the scope, your viewing angle will open up and your instrument will go more laterally, more peripherally to, to the working side. So now you see that this is the ipsilateral space of the lateral recess. This is the clear edge of the nerve. Now we can use a coagulator to stop the bleeding from the epidural vein yeah, and cut the flavum. As you can see here, this is like, like a flap. So cutting like this is not so effective. Yeah. So that's why later on I'm going to go to the, open up the space at the insertion cranially to remove the flavor more effectively, like this. So I cut the bone more. You see, I have them, the insertion cranially already. Now I'm going to the, to the contralateral side. For the bone at the contralateral side, sometimes we don't, sometimes we don't need to cut the, um, resect the bone out. But in, in this case, the setting facet was quite big. So I go more to see more the um, insertion of the flavum, cut more to the contralateral side here. So now you get to the lateral recess of the contralateral side here. So 
So it requires a lot of rotation of the scope. Okay, and after that, we can use um, the correction to cut down, free the nerve on the contralateral side. Yeah. So this is the, um, the post-op picture. Yeah. So my point for the central canal stenosis, when you first begin, yeah, so you have to clean the soft tissue and, um, and the muscle to see the bare bone, to reduce the bone debris during the bone resection. You have to control the bleeding um, effectively. Um, you have to see whether the bleeding comes from the muscle or from the epidural vein or from other places. Yeah. For in, 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 my, in my opinion, I prefer not to do the hypotensive technique because once the blood pressure comes back to normal after the operation, the bleeding will just come back. So I prefer to, to do under the, the normal blood pressure. Yeah. And the drill handling, um, try not to like, move the scope too much because otherwise if you move too much, it will cause some bleeding from the muscle and then can cause you some time. Yeah. Always see the tip of the instrument every time when you cut, when you drill, to avoid injuring the dura. Yeah. And the last thing that I want to say is to handle the scope, the rotation, and the joystick movement of, the, of your left hand. Yeah. So the recommendation before you start doing the central canal decompression, I recommend to start from simple interlaminar discectomy with a bone drilling, and then discectomy with bone drilling, then unilateral recess decompression, central canal decompression, then you can move your indications to cervical, thoracic, or endoscopic fusion later on, yeah, after you pass the learning curve. Okay, and that concludes my presentation today. Thank you very much.